So do you ever feel like your real estate workday is like that random box of leftover electrical plugs that you keep in your office? Uh Like I know for me, I have this old paper box where I store all of my extra phone chargers and all those random plugs that I feel like I can't throw away, but I really have nothing to do with them. I'm gonna take that box that really feels like our routines sometimes and dump it out on the table and reorganize it all so that we can reconstruct it into a beautiful routine for you. Because sometimes it really feels like that in real estate. We have so much stuff all tangled up in one little space and it's really hard to make sense of all the different tasks and duties that we need to take care of each day and ultimately results in a day of busy work that doesn't really get us anywhere. So let's again, as I said, let's dump out that box of busy work, get it all organized and put together some really solid routines and schedules for us to be on the right track to meet and exceed our goals. So my best tip for you regarding your winning routine and schedule in real estate is to actually start the day before. Your day starts the night of, right? So really what this looks like is before the end of my workday, every single day, I take 10, 15 minutes to just regroup. And I think back to that day, I look at what I completed and I kind of set my schedule for the following day. And it's really simple. All I'm doing here is indicating my top three priorities for the following day. So that when I wake up in the morning, I kind of have an understanding of what I need to get done and I'm not going to spend 20 or 30 minutes sifting through that box of cords with that analogy, trying to figure out which one makes the most sense to plug in at that moment. I think that this is one of the most worthwhile things that you can do because we know how quickly our day can get ahead of us. And a lot of times when we don't have that set schedule and we don't know what our priorities are for the day, what do we do? We either get lost in our inbox and start like messing around in there, or we get lost on the scroll on social media, just trying to feel productive and like looking for a lead. So that's my first tip. Start the night before, take 10 or 15 minutes, review your schedule and identify your top three daily priorities. Now, if you're already doing something like that, but you're coming up with a list of like 10, stop that. We're going to do three because you know, it always takes way more time to get any one thing done. The goal is to make sure that we are prioritizing the most high impact revenue producing activities on the short list. Okay. So then, you know, new day, you wake up, you have your morning routine. Let's talk about how we're going to start our work day. Now I love having kind of a workday startup routine. I love just taking a quick 10 or 15 minutes before I hit the inbox, before I get on social media, I'm going to gather myself, gather my mind and just get in the right frame of mind. Now, some agents are going to say that you have to really start your day with like a solid morning routine, starting at 5 a.m., all this stuff, hit the gym, do your meditations. I love all of that and I'm a big proponent of that, but I'm at a place in my life where that is not reasonable for me. (laughs) I don't know what's going on, but I'm I'm just at a place in my life, especially as a mother to a young child, like, the 5 a.m. stuff is not happening right now. So right now for me, I'm waking up at like 7, 7.30. If I get a workout in, cool, but really I'm prioritizing time with my family in the mornings. And then I'm getting into my office about 9, 9.30 a.m. And that's when I'm really starting my workday. And I begin by my little workday startup routine where I'm reviewing my top three and then looking at my calendar for the rest of the day so I have an understanding of what appointments I have to get to. Now, this is where I start adding in some real structure to my days. And again, the nature of the real estate business is not going to allow you to account for every single minute because fires will erupt in your business, or you have to get really responsive for clients. If they're standing outside of a house looking to get inside of it, like, you know, the drill. So what I do is I give myself a few rules to follow so that I have that structure that if I do kind of get pulled away into something urgent, I know exactly where to come back to. Now, the first big time block in my little structure for my day to day is my power hours. Now the power hours are the first two hours of the morning where I am straight up working on prospecting and marketing activities. This is when I'm doing any follow-ups, I'm doing any database calls, I'm doing any responses to social media inquiries. This is when I'm confirming 
appointments with new leads that came in through the night. What's beautiful about my business is that the way that we've set things up is we are an attraction-based business model, meaning leads come to us. They are primarily 90% of the time inbound leads. So they are booking appointments with me and all I have to do is just confirm them and set that. Now, when they're booking appointments with me through Calendly, for example, they can only book at times that I set my availability. So I know that I'm not going to be waking up first thing in the morning, kind of trying to respond to like a buyer consultation or an urgent client call. During these two hours, I'm not, I'm not going to appointments. I'm never setting appointments during this time. This is specifically managing new leads, following up with other leads, connecting with my database, and then conducting any marketing activities. During this time, my goal is to get 10 conversations in. Okay, so it might not happen right within that time. I might be sending off texts and waiting for a response later in the day if my prospects or um, database contacts take a while to get back to me. But I'm trying to initiate 10 conversations during this two hour window of time. And then also I'm trying to accomplish one marketing task. So maybe this looks like sketching out an email newsletter to send out for the month, or maybe this looks Looks like doing my social media posting during that time on Instagram or TikTok. So again, these are activities specifically fueling the fire for your business. And so I know even if my day totally goes off the deep end after this, I got the most important things done during those two hours. So you can check out this video here where I go a little more in depth into power hours. I really kind of break it down into like what activities you should be doing. I could talk about this stuff a lot, but you should know that there is not one way to do this. Um, when I'm working with agents in the Market Authority Academy, we help them create specific power hours that actually reflect their goals and their business and what opportunities they have. So if any coach or guru is coming to you saying like just painting with a broad brush and saying this is what you should be doing, they're probably not totally there, right? Like it's it's not gonna really work for you. And this is why a lot of agents wonder like, well, I'm making my calls, I'm doing all this work and it's not leading anywhere. You have to tailor your prospecting activities to your goals or else it's just not gonna click. As we get into the afternoon, the first things that I'm going to do is really just take some time for myself. So sometimes I have a lunch by myself or a lunch with my son or my husband and I really just make sure to nourish myself. I'm really bad at forgetting to do this and then sometimes not eating until like 3 p.m. And if I do that, my day is over. And so I really do prioritize nourishing myself. And so you should be scheduling in a block for your lunch. But if you still feel like you should be doing something to stay busy during this time, then you should be breaking bread with somebody else. So this is a great time to get a face to face in. So anytime I'm meeting with other colleagues or meeting with other prospects and it's more of a social visit, like nurturing a relationship, I'm scheduling that over a lunch, right? Like I'm going to make sure that we're going to go on a nice lunch date or get a nice coffee and a snack and make sure that if I'm getting those face to faces in. We're also going to do it in a way that's going to cultivate deep connection. And there are studies made on how that happens while you're breaking bread or eating with somebody. It's it's a, a very connective human experience to share food with somebody and obviously not like spoon feeding each other, but you know what I mean? Sharing a meal with somebody is a great way to cultivate deep connection. And we want to make sure that we're making space for that. So if I'm not having a little lunch date with um, somebody I really care about in my family, then I might also make sure to include a lunch date a couple times a week with another colleague or somebody that I'm networking with. And then the rest of the afternoon is left for appointments. So this is your time to be zipping around town, doing all the things that you need to do. Showings appraisals, inspections, whatever you have going on, that is where you're going to do this. For example, any of my buyer consultation calls or seller interviews, I'm doing those all in the afternoon. I'm again, not doing it during my morning work. I'm making sure that I'm carving time out to do it during that time. Don't be afraid to tell clients that that's how it has to be. <laughs> you know, so a lot of times I have client uh, agents when I'm working with them, especially in market authority, where they're like, well, you know, they just, they told me that they were available during this time and it kind of, you know, screwed up my power hours and the rest of my day got ahead of me. And I would say, well, why didn't you schedule it at a different time? And it just never occurs to them because they're afraid to set boundaries because they feel like that means they're going to lose the opportunity. But this is not true. People want to know your boundaries. People want to respect your space. You just have to teach them how to do that. So as my day wraps up, the last thing that I'm doing is again, checking my inbox one last time. 
I'm not in my inbox throughout the day. I might check it two to three times throughout the day just to make sure there's no crazy fires going on that I have to be involved with. If there is something going on, people can reach me on my phone. So I'm not glued to my inbox, but I might check it through the end of the day, just kind of wrap up any communications that I need to. And then from there, again, I'm setting my top three for the next day and I'm closing my laptop and I'm spending the evening with my family. From five to 8 p.m., I do not exist to the world. I am making dinner. I'm taking my son on a walk. We're hanging out. It's family time. I don't need to be working 24 hours of the day because if you're doing that, you're really not doing anything impactful enough to your bottom line. You're just doing busy work. I promise. That's just the way it is. And so that's when all notifications are off and I'm totally focused on my family. After my son goes to bed at eight, I might get back on the computer and do a few things. Otherwise I'm doing my evening routine and getting a good night's sleep, prioritizing my rest and making sure that I am fresh and ready for the next day. And there you have it. I really hope that this helped and I hope that this gave you some perspective on how you can create a really solid structure around your day while still giving you the flexibility to kind of move with the demands of the public, of the industry, of the market. We know how it is, it's really crazy. But again, as I said at the top of this video, the most important thing is just creating some guide rails so that you know where to go back to if your day gets away from you. Because you won't be able to follow this 100% of the time. If you're able to follow this structure like 80% of the time, you're gonna do great. And this is gonna help you feel way more on top of things. And it's gonna give you that margin that you need to have the mental bandwidth to get all of the right things done for your business. Now, if you're struggling here and you need to take this a step further, we can talk. So in the Market Authority Academy, I work directly with agents to help them create these schedules that actually work for them. And I walk them through a series of intensive exercises to actually understand exactly what their most high leverage activities are so that there's no guessing games and no overwhelm when it comes to dumping out the box of cords and trying to untangle everything that you feel like you've got to get done, right? So if you need a little bit of help here, all of the details to book a time to chat with me regarding the Market Authority Academy are below. The way that works is you choose a time that works with you. We hop on a call. I hear about what your challenges are. And then if it seems like I can help, we'll take it from there. Thanks so much for tuning in. And until next time, keep on crushing it. Mm -hmm.